You may think that submarines and battleships are the coolest thing in the water, but did you know you could get your own amphibious vehicle? Here are nine of the most outrageous amphibious vehicles you have to see. Number 9. The Amphicar 770 if you can believe it, the Amphicar Model 770 was an amphibious automobile that debuted in 1961. Designed in West Germany and funded by the American Quant Group, there were less than 4,000 manufactured in total. The car is a descendant of the Volkswagen Schwimmwagen, but it didn't have great power or any special amenities. All it really had were the navigation lights and a flag that were required by the Coast Guard. Past that, it was pretty basic. Luckily, the doors locked shut for water travel. The Amphicar's engine was at the rear of the car and it had a four-speed manual transmission. It was also paired with reversible propellers and floated around in neutral. It had a power output of 43 horsepower at 4,750 RPM and could reach seven knots in the water and 70 miles per hour max on land. Some owners changed the engines to improve their performance. A lot of people complained that it wasn't a good car and it wasn't a good boat. One owner said it promised to revolutionize drowning and that it was the fastest boat on the road and the fastest car in the water. Fun fact, President Lyndon B. Johnson himself owned an Amphicar. He was known as a practical joker and liked freaking out his visitors. He would say he was going to take everyone out for a drive and then head straight into the lake pretending the brakes had quit. Regardless of its weak reputation, people still have a soft spot for this car and now you can get one for about $45,000. Number 8. Gibbs Aquata the Gibbs Aquata is a high-speed amphibious vehicle that was developed by Gibbs Sports Amphibians. It was only produced for a limited time between 2003 and 2004. Only about 30 of these were made, but in 2016, they decided to sell around 20 of them as collector vehicles. The Aquata is a three-seater with no doors and no top. It can go about 100 miles per hour on land and drive into the water, retract its wheels in four seconds, and become a boat at 35 miles per hour. There are over 60 patents covering the design of the boat. It isn't just a boat with wheels or a car that can float, but an entirely unique creation. Gibbs has spent over 18 years and $200 million developing this vehicle. A lot of people mistakenly compare it to the Amphicar 770, and we all know what kind of a reputation that had. This vehicle, though, is what you really want in an amphibious car. To feel like James Bond, of course! It has a V6 Land Rover Freelander engine with a water jet, and all you have to do is drive into the water where the sensors will do the rest. Like an airplane landing, the Aquata retracts its wheels. It knows when it's in the water, at what depth it is, and when to retract its wheels. The road lights can even switch to marine lights automatically. Rover stopped producing the engine, and now the vehicle has to be re-engineered. But no worries, because the founder of the company, Alan Gibbs, is a billionaire from New Zealand. The vehicle has set records for crossing specific bodies of water in record time. Top Gear magazine covered the Aquata when Allen drove it into and around the Monaco Harbor during the Grand Prix of Monaco. Since the vehicle is approached and loaded like a boat, but feels like a car, it is hard to categorize it. Most who have driven it feel it performs very well. Before being sold, each car goes through rigorous testing to ensure it can withstand the water and any treacherous paths it may encounter. These 20 vehicles that were available sold for around $250,000 on a first-come, first-served basis. Number 7. The Sea Lion The Sea Lion is the world's fastest amphibious car. Invented by Mark Witt, it was designed to set world records on land and on water. It is technically called an amphibious world speed record competition vehicle, so don't get it twisted. It can do 125 miles per hour on the roads and then drive right into the water where it can go about 60 miles per hour. Mark built the car himself and designed the body so it could function as a road vehicle and then also be waterproof. It is a unique car as there is only one of them in the world, and in 2012, the inventor sold it for $259,500. The engine is a 174 horsepower Mazda rotary engine and is just aching to take the title of the fastest amphibious car in the world, though no one has proven it can do so, yet. Considering it can easily reach 125 miles per hour without any further enhancements, this is quite impressive. With some changes to the engine, it can go 180 miles per hour. There are 25 contenders currently vying for the title of world's fastest amphibious land speed vehicle to hold the Guinness World Record. However, Guinness has not yet announced a winner, so in the meantime, the Sea Lion holds the informal title. Number 6. Water Car Panther 
Watercar is an American company that specializes in the creation of not just efficient, but luxury amphibious vehicles. Now we're talking. Now this car also claims to be the fastest amphibious vehicle, so we'll just go with it. The founder was inspired by the Amphicar of the 1960s that I told you about. Originally, the creator of Watercar just wanted to build the car for fun, not market it. But in 2013, 14 years after he built it, the Watercar Panther was revealed to the public. It has been called the most fun vehicle on the planet and can turn from a car to a boat in under 15 seconds. Now you can get the 2017 model for about $180,000. Sometimes a car is enough, but when there's lots of traffic, like in Miami, sometimes you just need to use alternative methods. It has a speed of 80 miles per hour on land and 45 miles per hour on water. You may think it looks like a floating Jeep, and with good reason. The Panther was based off of a Jeep compact SUV, so it is a great choice for you Jeep fans with some extra cash. Once in the water, the driver puts the vehicle in neutral, pulls a handle, pushes a lever, and the wheels lift out of the water while transitioning to water mode. The company now offers a fire rescue version that is US Coast Guard approved, and it can transition from land to sea in less than three seconds. Number five, Terra Wind Motorhome. What, RVs can swim? Well, apparently this one can. The Terra Wind is known as the world's first and currently only amphibious motorhome. So what's the catch? Just that it will cost you $850,000. And if you want the works, it can go up to 1.2 million. The Terra Wind was created and released by CAMI, which stands for Cool Amphibious Manufacturers International. Of course it does. But what may surprise you is that this baby is packed with 330 horsepower. To transition into the water, twin 19-inch bronze propellers are activated to push this 32,000-pound monster through the water. The Terra Wind is not only efficient, but comes with a nice deck on the back and an outdoor shower. You know, for when you're in the middle of the ocean or in a river or lake and you need a shower out on the deck. On the inside, you have leather furniture, marble accents, and plush carpet. And of course, a big screen TV. Rather than sliding cargo racks, the Terra Wind has inflatable stabilizing pontoons that keep it from rocking back and forth. Although this guy is like a new age yacht, not many can afford one, or you'd see them crowding public waters all over the world. Number four, the Lark 5. The Lark 5 stands for Lighter Amphibious Resupply Cargo 5 Ton. It is an aluminum hulled amphibious cargo vehicle that can, you guessed it, carry five tons. Invented in the 1950s, it is probably more widely used today than ever. Military forces in Australia, Argentina, Portugal, the Philippines, Singapore, Iceland, and the United States still use them. The thing is, less than a thousand of them were made and over half of them have been destroyed, on purpose, as part of disposal when the US left Vietnam in the 70s. Still, about 200 are being used in the military and 100 are privately owned. Random fact, many of them are used for tours in Iceland. Unfortunately, they are not known for their speed, as their land speed is 30 miles per hour, and their water speed doesn't reach 10 miles per hour. But during the Vietnam War, they were a great asset for their durability and cargo capacity. Over the last 10 years, some of these have been remodeled, tested, and enhanced to create even more powerful, useful military tools. During the U.S. Navy Service Life Extension Program, they changed the mechanical transmission to hydraulic and updated the electrical system. These reworked Larks were used for underwater construction teams and the maritime pre-positioned force ships. Towing capacity can now reach about nearly 30,000 pounds, and Bollard pull in the water about 7,600 pounds. Number 3. Sea Rotor Lamborghini Countach Amphibious Lambo? Yes, please! In a couple of seconds, all your childhood dreams will come true as you get a load of this car. Most Lamborghinis are not so great on the water. They are also ridiculously expensive but the world's only amphibious Lamborghini Countach was sold for under $27,000. Well, it was actually a replica with the body used as the cover and you could get it on eBay. But considering it is a Countach replica, it's still pretty sweet. Every detail is painstakingly accurate. Even the body panels were molded from a Countach 5000 QV. The original Countach was shown in 1971 as the Lamborghini LP500 concept car. It had the famous Italian wedge shape made famous by Bertoni. This sea rotor is often called the Amphiborghini and was built by Mike Ryan of England's Sea Rotor Amphibious Vehicles along with people from BBC's Top Gear. And no, it doesn't have a V12. Not only can it travel on land and water thanks to a Rover 8, but it even has a smokescreen button. How cool can this car get? 
While it's not James Bond's Lotus Esprit submarine and the spy who loved me, it might be the next best thing. Number 2. Gibbs Humdinger Alan Gibbs from Gibbs Technologies, remember him, the Kiwi who also created the Aquata, created this five-seater Humdinger four-wheel drive vehicle. The Humdinger wasn't announced until 2012. Like the Hummer, it was created to access the most hostile of terrains. But the Humdinger takes off-road to a whole new level as it can access both difficult roads and, of course, the water. The Humdinger can transition from land to water and vice versa with just the push of a button. When the transition is complete, the wheels retract and the powertrain disconnects from powering the wheels to powering the jet propulsion system. Due to its size and power, Gibbs often calls the Humdinger an amphitruck. It is always in four-wheel drive and can travel at about 100 miles per hour. On water, however, it can still reach 30 miles per hour. Another unique thing about the Humdinger is that unlike most amphibious vehicles, it can seat five people complete with luggage and supplies comfortably. Why isn't it on the market yet? Well, it took 15 years and over a million man-hours to develop, so they're working on it. They now have the Humdinger 2 and the Phibian out, but still they are designed with the military, rescue, and humanitarian operations in mind. Price is available upon request. Number 1. Rinspeed Scuba The Rinspeed Scuba is the world's first car that can be driven both on land and underwater. What? Weren't we just talking about cars that went on water? Yes, on the water. But this takes vehicles to a whole new level. The Scuba is an underwater car. This is a multi-purpose vehicle. The idea for the Rinspeed was inspired by the 1977 James Bond film The Spy Who Loved Me, and this car can literally drive under the water. This scuba is a zero-emission, all-electric vehicle. It has three motors, one for land and two for the water, and its batteries are rechargeable. But it can do more than dive. The scuba can also float on the surface until the operator is ready to submerge it down to 33 feet. On land, it can drive up to 75 miles per hour, but in and under the water, it can hardly reach 4 miles per hour. But is that really the point? No! Considering it comes with cruise control and lasers and it can even go in salt water. It was introduced in 2008 but has yet to hit the market. The price is still unknown, but since it cost $1.5 million to build, chances are it will be rather expensive. The seller promises that it will probably be cheaper than a Rolls Royce. So what do you prefer? A Rolls or the Rinspeed Scuba. Thanks for watching. Which one of these is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!